God is our strength. Amen? You know, those questions that are there, they're posed by the psalmist. I was talking yesterday with a cousin, and she was just sharing how people have talked with her uh, about their faith. And she's just been someone who's been a catalyst and been open to having those conversations of faith with others. And they will come to her because they trust her as a friend and start to have these questions about their faith. And they believe different than we do. And they start to ask these questions of her about how she can know in her face so certainly. And she says, well, because we can go with questions to God and it's not wrong to ask the question. Whereas other people were like, well, you can't question, you can't do this. And she's like, no, we come with the question because we know a God who loves us in the very depths of who we are. He knows we have the question. So ask the question to a living God and he'll answer your heart right where you are. It's a powerful thing, friends. It's an amazing thing we have with our God. We're so glad that you're here today at Cornerstone. If we haven't met, my name is Jay. Celeste and I have the opportunity of leading here, and it's such an awesome thing to be a part of this community of faith. Um, I'll say this, man. It's, it's one of those things that Christmas is so amazing. How many people had a great Christmas? How many people was like, oh, it was so great? How many people are like, man, I'm tired of all the people. Go away. Anybody else? No, thank God. Not everybody. Only half the people in this room and most of the people online. It was one of the things that, no, I'm joking. I think it's tough, right? Because it's one of those things where it's like, man, you have such a great time, and then you're like, ah, ah, okay, it's done. Now what? Right? Now what? And now everybody's like, all the sugar I've eaten over the last three weeks, I have to not have that anymore come January 1st because I'm in trouble and my new diet starts, right? It's really in a time of assessment at the end of this year, and so that's what we start talking about. So for us here at Cornerstone, it's not just these, these uh, weekend gatherings, it's also life groups, and they'll kick off in the beginning of this next year, and, and we'll be offering new life groups. We want to encourage you to get involved with those. Connect, grow, and serve. Much more important than your waistline is your relationship with the living God. Much, much more important than whether or not you smell like cigarette smoke is your life with the living God. And so I'll tell you this, like, as much as those are all good things for our body, this is better for our spirit and our soul. And so let me encourage you, get involved, connect, grow, and serve, that you would get involved with your life with God, that you connect with other people and build relationships. Man, it's, it's been said so often that you can go to the same church for years and years and not know the people on the other side of the church. Did you know? or in the other services or whatever it is. And so it's one of those things that we want to intentionally build community together. We want to be those who are living this thing out. It's not just a place we go to, but it's a community of faith. That's who we are. We are the church, the people, not a building. And so since that's true, let's act like it and be together in community. We also want to be those who grow in our faith. We want to take those steps after what God is speaking to us. We talk about it all the time. And it's one of those things that we want to do. And so we also want to be those who serve, who use our talents for the Lord, who use of all the things he's given to us and serve the community, serve in the church, use our talents for God, because we all are needed to see more people reached with the gospel message. Amen? Amen. So that's an encouraging thing for us. And as we start off this new year, I want to encourage you that you would get involved with it and you would be a part of all those things. Now, we talk about at the end of the year, we started doing this thing called year in review, year in review. And it's an idea where you start to take a look at all the different attributes of all the things that God has spoken to us over this last year and put those things into effect. Now, we also have been talking about these things. We want to be reminded of the things that God's been speaking to us about. How many people know what I'm talking about? How many people, when you were in school, you forgot all the things your teacher told you before the night before the exam? You're like, what did they say three weeks ago? What was the year the War of Independence was when? You guys still don't know. You should have paid attention. See, it's one of those things. And so we want to review and, talk and look back at all the things that the Lord has spoken to us. Man, I was talking with Pastor Agus this morning, and I love this about him, man. He is on a mission to declutter his life and his house, but he's in a battle with four tiny, beautiful children. And Annie can, can, can testify. Uh, and he just made me laugh. I was like, how was your Christmas, man? He's like, oh, it was great. It was chill. It was all these things. And as the kids got new things, we went in and we're like, okay, what are we getting rid of? What are we donating to other people? And he just started cleaning it out on Christmas. I was like, you, you're the man. Because a lot of us, man, we wait till right now to start decluttering our life for the new year, right? 
And it's tough, man, when you start to get that declutter thing going in your life because it's hard because of all the sentimental value we attribute to all the things. Anybody with all the things, the sentimental value? You're like, I can't throw out that old board. You're like, but it's warped and we can't use it for anything. Yeah, but it means so much to me. And you're like, what? I have a mother who has sentimental attachment to all the things. And I love that about her. She's the sweetest person in the world. And I'm like, I challenge her. I'm like, Mom, let's get rid of this. And she's like, no, I don't want to. And I'm like, Mom, I'm willing to get rid of all the things. And then I go home, and I have a wife who's like ultra. Let's get rid of all the things all the time. So this is like, have you used this in two weeks? I'm like, well, I, that's a good shirt. She's like, yeah, we should get rid of this. I'm like, no, no. So anything I'm doing and on with my mom, Celeste is doing to me way, way worse in getting rid of all the clutter in life. And actually, I appreciate that because it's one of those things that keeps you on mission and focus. Right, babe? Amen. <laughs> now, I'll tell you this. There is something to that because whenever we, would, we finally said yes to God about moving overseas for the first time to go plant a church with others in Europe, we had to get rid of a whole house full of stuff. And friends, I don't know if you've gotten rid of a whole house full of stuff. It's not that easy. Because you have all this stuff. It's like, well, that's good. And this is, un, un, uh, uh, and you start to have a panic attack a little bit. But here's the deal. If, if you're more holding on to the mission of God for your life, he will draw you right away from all that stuff that you want to be connected to. And guess what? If you're willing to let go of it, then you can go where he wants you to go. And that's the same thing with giving or anything else. If God's like, hey, I want you to give this, and you're like, but I need to hold on to it. He's like, no, I want you to give up your life. I want to give you your time. I want to give you your resources. And you're like, but I want to hold on. He's like, I'm going over here. Are we going? Are you going with me? And I had to learn that the hard way because I was the one. Celeste was like, we're going. I'm excited. I was like, but the things. I have all the things. She's like, let go of the things. I was like, all right. And then you let go of it, and like you do it a couple times, you're like, okay, I'm good. And we got back, and we were going to go to the Middle East, and I got some more things. And I was like, oh, I got some things. And she's like, we're going to get rid of those too. I was like, no, no, I want the things. You got to get rid of the things, man. Here's the thing. Nothing wrong with having things as long as they don't own you. You can have all the things. You can have warehouses full of the things as long as they don't own you. See, here's the thing is, if we're so concerned with the things of this world, we're not concerned with the things of eternity and what God wants to do in and through our lives. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. I'm dead serious. Because we get back into America, man, you could not imagine how fast we could fill up our garage with stuff. People giving us stuff to fill up a garage. And Dave was like, man, you want a bike? I was like, I want a bike. It's in my garage, Dave. I don't know what to do, man. That's what I'm saying. So quickly we can get just bogged down by the things of this world. And I'm not picking on your stuff. I'm just saying don't let anything, anything hold you back from where God wants to take you in this new year. The things that he's done in breakthrough in your life this year, don't let that get covered up by stuff in this next year. Man, go with God where he wants to go. Amen? It's not even my notes. Let's go. All right. Reflect. Today we're going to talk about this idea of reflection. As we look at reflection, we start with this, uh, the concept that 2021 was interesting. How many people would say, yes, it was interesting? See, that's a word that I use that means it can mean it is interesting, and I'd also use it as like, oh, that's interesting. When people tell me something that's really sketchy or bad or terrible, I'm like, well, that's interesting. How many people use a word like that? You use that too? Use it with your children, right? They're like, Dad, I want to do this. You're like, that's interesting, isn't that? And that's how I feel about 2021, man. I was like, I was so excited, you guys, at the beginning of 2021. End of 2020 was here. If you guys remember, we were so excited. We're like, we're going to 2021. COVID is over. It's going to be a new day. The beginning of 2021, I got COVID. I was like, this is not going well. But here's the thing. The God of 2020 is still the God of 2021. He's still the God of 2022 and on until he meets us face to face. These things did not catch him by surprise. And so they might have caught us by surprise, but we can't be those who are caught by surprise. We've got to be walking with the Lord because things don't always go as unto plan. How many people know what I'm talking about? And since they don't, we've got to hold on to the one who's the beginning and at the end and beyond those things as well. We talked about at the beginning of the year, we talked about this idea of focus. And focus was what we were, we were talking about is refocusing on God 
We use this example of Bear Grylls, if you guys remember, talked about improvise, adapt, overcome, being those who are willing to walk with God and be fluid into what he wants to call us to be. We use this example of Joshua. Joshua's taking over for, for Moses. He was taking over for this huge journey they made through the desert, and the Lord was speaking to Joshua in Joshua 1. He says this in verse 5, No man should be able to stand before you with all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore their fathers to give them. Be strong and courageous and courageous. Someone needed to hear that today. Be strong and courageous. Just like Joshua was able to face all these battles that were coming out. Man, he just got to the promised land, folks. He was excited. It was the promise of God. And now God's like, well, now the battle starts. Here's the thing. In this coming year, as we see more people come to Jesus, that's when things get uncomfortable. Because people come with people issues. And they need time to let Jesus work on their issues. And so you got to make room for that neighbor that isn't quite like Jesus yet. Like any of us, we're all on a journey after Christ. You seen that image of Jesus walking with his disciples before? It looks like this. You guys didn't think I had it? I did. It's there. We talked about love notes. We went into to, uh, February talking about relationships and different things like that. We talked about those, of, those people who, who want to have a relationship first need to understand the love of God first. And we know that a relationship doesn't complete us in those things. We have to be complete with God and the other is a blessing. And so we see this, this addition that's there, that love is from God. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. We say amen to that. It's how we're called to be those who love. We looked back into the Old Testament, started talking about the kings uh, of Israel, the kings of Judah talked about how they ruled and reigned and how the lessons we could learn with good examples of kings and poor examples of kings. And we talked about the difference between them being the anointing of God and how we're called to be those who are anointed of God and to stay in the anointing of God. We had examples like Saul who walked away from that anointing. We had other examples where they didn't have the anointing of God and tried to force their will upon things, and the Lord held his hand against them. We see other examples that are here, and it's, it's what happened in David's life. It's what happened in, in Solomon's life early on in his reign, where they put God first. It's the same thing we read whenever Jesus comes on the scene and he opens the scroll. He has the same kind of agenda to be one anointed and used by the Holy Spirit. Though he is the son of God, he had emptied himself of divinity. And so it says this in Luke 4, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. How many people would say amen? We talked about Hezekiah as an example of one of those kings and how he had to have the courage to trust God whenever devastation was at his doorstep. We also talked about the need to embrace true wisdom and not depart from it like Solomon. See, to be the wisest person and then to depart from the wisdom of God in application in his life is heartbreaking that we would be different than that. We talked about Colossians, and we went through the book of Colossians talking about this question, who is Jesus to you? Colossians 1, 15 and 16 says this, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Somebody say amen. He was from the beginning. We talked about it even at Christmas Eve, that it says in the beginning was the word, the Lord Jesus, the creator God, him with the father, with the spirit, were there at the beginning. They'll be there after the end. And so he knows all of these things. He is the first for us. We talked about being rooted in Christ and asked that question, what are you rooted in? 
It says this in Scripture, Colossians 2. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Today, we started this service, the praise scene, before they even sang one song publicly to you, were saying what they were thankful for, giving thanks to God. We ourselves, thanking the Lord for this year, what are you rooted in? We ask this question also, what are, are you raised with Christ? Colossians 3 says, if, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. How many people say amen? Amen. And we started looking towards Easter in this, in this theme called Toward the Cross. We looked at Jesus in the lessons that were there with him and the preparation towards the Holy Week of all those things and examples that are there. We talked about some of the things about being those who are prepared to embrace the bridegroom as he comes. And that difference that happens with that imagery of those who were not ready for the bridegroom, bride, bridegroom to come. We asked the question, are you prepared? Are you prepared for Jesus? We also asked this question, where your, we say this, where your focus is, your actions will follow. How many people know that is true? Well, man, let's say it again. Where your focus is, your actions will follow. We saw this example of Jesus himself, the teacher, the, 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 the one who is so highly revered. They know he's the Messiah. He comes to do all these things. And what does he do? At the beginning of that series of events of him going to the cross, he bows down. He takes out his, out his, off his outer garment and he washes the dirty, stinky feet of his disciples. See, his intention was to serve mankind, to empty himself of all those things and be obedient to the Father. And that first was an example of being a servant to all. And the thing that blows my mind is that he washed the feet of all the disciples, even the one that would trade him for some silver coins not that long after. Friends, your intentions, your intentions are so important. Where is your heart focused? Where is your heart focused? And we ask this question, what do you worship? Are you worshiping money? Are you worshiping prestige? Are you worshiping some kind of fame? Or are you worshiping the living God? And as we went toward the cross, we celebrated Easter and his resurrection from the grave. Someone say amen to that. We came out of Easter and we started talking about Pentecost. We started talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, the promise of Pentecost and how Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. How many people are thankful? Fire filled speak. We talked about how, how wrong that is in the English language, but how true it is for us. Fire filled speak. It says this in Acts 2 When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came a, from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes the power of the Holy Spirit for the early church. See, it's only by his spirit that all of these things happened because they needed the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If we're gonna be witnesses for him, if we're gonna live this life for Jesus, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's not just to speak in tongues and, and to, to, to look holy or to lift up. It is for lifting ourselves up, but it's also for the action to do these things. We talked about it. It's, it's freedom. It's to bring freedom to the captives. What did Jesus say he came to do? It's to testify. It's to show the glory of who Christ is in our lives. It's to build that community. What happened? When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they didn't hold on to the things anymore. They gave and they made a way for other people. It's about healing. We saw by the power of the Holy Spirit, they reached out and people were healed. 
We saw truth was told. They were able to speak truth to those who were seeking truth. They were able to stand with boldness against those who they cowered against in the past. Think about Peter standing up and giving that sermon on the day of Pentecost to people that he hid from and swore he didn't know Jesus just some days before. The power of the Holy Spirit for you, for me. It's, a, it's an obedience to give of our lives and hold nothing back as we're filled with the Spirit. On Mother's Day, I got to share about my mom and I, the question is do what your mother told you that was the statement do what your mother told you how many people say amen all the moms say amen, amen. if you're not saying amen you missed it and i talked about my mom and she's so sweet so amazing i talked about her soft spoken strength and i talked about how my mom and my dad they never gave up praying for me even when i walked away from god and even when I was away from God and I had known better, but I got bitter at church people. Ever happened to you? Happened to me. I got bitter. I got angry first. Didn't deal with the anger correctly as we're supposed to. I got bitter. And that root of bitterness drove me to hate church. And it drove me away from living for God as my own choice, as my own mistake. But they didn't give up praying for me. I think it'd be very appropriate there are people in the room who are praying for their children. They're praying for their grandchildren to know Jesus. I think it'd be very appropriate for us to pray for the prodigal. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, for all those, Lord, that are prodigals away from you right now. God, maybe they've even known you in the past or were raised, that maybe even raised in this church. Lord, they know God or they know the idea of God. Lord, that you would call them to yourself by your spirit. Lord, we pray the prayer of no satisfaction upon the things of this world. Lord, they can be blessed and chase all sorts of things and all those things. They mean nothing because it's without God. So, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that they would be drawn to you, the one and only living God. Lord, that you would draw them to yourself. Lord, that even in this moment, the day after Christmas, as we say these prayers, wherever they are in this world, Lord, that by your spirit, you would be sparking their heart. Lord, that they would have that drive to know the eternal God. Lord, and there would be nothing that holds them back. Lord, I pray against any kind of bitterness, any kind of hurt, any kind of thing that has happened. Lord, especially from the church, Lord, we ask forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that there would be nothing that holds them back, no barrier that separates them from coming back to you. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We continued on, and Celeste got a chance to share about her dad on Father's Day. I love this picture of Angel. Man, look at that afro. Praise the Lord. Successful Mexican afro. It's power. It's power. I'm going to see him later today. I'm going to hear about that. Um, she talked about the things she learned from him and how he trusted the Lord with her. As a single female, she was going across the world to these places, and he trusted God with his little girl that we would do the same, that we would trust God and hold nothing back. We talked about the summer of love and we talked about scriptures, jumping off with this in 1 Corinthians 13. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We talked about the power of love. It says this in, in 1 Corinthians 13, in the beginning of that. It says, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. You guys remember I brought a cymbal on stage and was smacking the cymbal. It says, if I have a prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. And so that's the word that comes to us. And that we can experience freedom through love as well. This is it in John 15, 12 through 13. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. See, that's the ultimate in freedom is one that was willing to give their life for other people. We talked about what love and action looks like. We know this so much. Many times it's used in weddings or other things, but what love is. 
Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And then it says, love never fails. We talked about how love abides. First John 4 says, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he's given us his spirit. And we've seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We talk about abiding with the Lord, staying in the presence of the Lord. We talked about his everlasting love for us. Romans 8, I love this piece of scripture. It says, for I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Someone say amen to that. That is the thing. That is the thing. Everlasting love. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Love restores he heals up the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. There are people this year, this past year, 2020, 2021, that they lost loved ones that were so dear to their heart. They're dear to us as a community. And, and this is the scripture for you. This is the scripture for us, that he heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. And see, that is so important you know, we know we love deeply, so we should mourn deeply. But then we should also heal as the Lord by his spirit works in our hearts. Doesn't mean we don't miss that person. Doesn't mean we don't remember them. It doesn't mean that, but that we would heal and we'd be able to move forward that and as part of our story and the relationship we have, getting to see them in our hope face to face in the presence of God. Grounded in love, we talked about being grounded in love just as we did before of being rooted in God. We need to be grounded in love. Ephesians 3 says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every heaven and on, 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 from every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Someone say amen. Man, such a powerful thing of going through all of those scriptures about love this summer. I hope it motivated you to be love to your neighbors and to those around you. I know for me, it was a challenge often because as soon as you start talking about love, he's like, really, do you really love people? Here's some people to love. And you're like, God, these aren't lovely people. He's like, exactly, exactly. And neither were you. But that's why he sends those who've experienced the love of God to love the unlovely because that's who loved us whenever we didn't know God. The Lord help us. Man, this year we got to celebrate 35 years of ministry at Cornerstone. And it was so awesome, man. I can't say enough about it. We talked about our vision and values. We got to celebrate with my parents, Rich and Cindy Brown, the founding pastors of this church. We, I want to say this today. Thank you for praying for them. Thank you for praying for my dad especially. Um, He's been sick this past, these past two weekends and, and through the week, and we're just praying for his healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Others that are away from this house today letting us know that they need healing in the name of Jesus. We're praying for you wherever you are. Let's just pray for them right now. Lord Jesus, by your healing power, Lord, we pray that you would reach out to all those who need a touch from you today, whether in this room and in this house, Lord, or at their home or seeing this later, Lord, that you would heal them in the power of the name that's only found in Jesus Christ. Christ, upon his blood, Lord, was shed for us, Lord, that has paid the price for that healing. Lord, we command all sickness, all disease to go away in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand on this in his powerful name we pray. Amen. We celebrated all the things that the Lord has done for this community. It was powerful and talked about the vision that God has given us in this house. A vision is a preferred future. It's what we want to see happen. So we anticipate to see happen. For us, our vision for each one of us is to be more like Jesus. 
man, that is for me as well, mission of my life to be more like Jesus. That's the vision I have. And the mission is this, the way we break that down, how we get there in tangible steps, our smart goals, so to speak, for all of you leadership gurus out there, is to love God, to make disciples, to reach the world. That's how we're gonna do it. We have first things first, we have to love God with everything we are, heart, soul, mind, everything. And we need to be those who make disciples. It doesn't say make converts. It says make disciples. Making disciples is dirty, nasty work because guess what? It's people with people. People get hurt. People get mad. They get all sorts of things. We need to make disciples. Which means we need to be willing to love through the mess. And we need to reach the world. We are not called just to hear. We are called to hear to these cities. It's on our shirts. I'm wearing that shirt next week. It's for us, man, for these cities, for our, for our community, but not just for here, for the ends of the world. We're called to all those things. And that's why we give unto missions to do these things. We're talking about Matthew 22 says this, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law. He said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. The second's like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Matthew 28 says this, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. To the end of the age. That means if the world is ending for you today or for us collectively today, guess what? He's with us to the very end. And if he gives us another 100 years, then we, he will be with us until that very end. He's with us. We need to be about his work, about his work, making disciples. Those values that we talk about so often and how we live this out is that we connect, we grow, we serve. Connect, grow, serve. People be like, what's that church about? Well, let me tell you. They want you to connect. <laughs> they want you to grow. They want you to serve. That's who each one of us is called to be. We have a short video talking about our neighbors. A challenge to all of our leadership here a few months back about inviting 10 people to church before the end of the year. You've never seen a group of Christians so challenged in their whole lives. No, I'm joking. But it is a challenge, man. If you know only church people, it's hard to invite people to church. How many people know what I'm saying? And so we are challenged to invite our neighbors to church. We're challenged to be those who are a light to those around us. And here's the thing. We want to pray right now knowing that we only have a few days left to invite them to church before the year ends. We want to pray right now for all of our neighbors. 
for those around us, for those we interact with, for those colleagues at work, for all the people that were a part of those communities, whatever that looks like, that they would know God. Amen? Let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, that you've called us to be light in the darkness. Lord, and you came as light to the darkness. The darkness will not overcome it. Lord, we know that scripture. Lord, we stand on that fact. And so, Lord, we ask, Lord, for every neighbor of every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they would know the power and the love of God. Lord, that they would, in these days ahead, get to embrace you, Lord Jesus. Lord, that these here would be a witness to them, Lord, to their neighbor, to their colleague, to their friend. Lord, being a witness, being those who go and make disciples, who reach the world. That's what you've called us to do. So, Lord, we take it serious and we put it into action steps. So, Lord, we pray for those neighbors that they would know Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We talked about what it means to be blessed, and we talked about all those things that Jesus declared were blessed. How many people love to be blessed? Man, I know I do, and I know the blessing of God is upon us. We talked about this, and it says in Matthew 5, verse 1, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then it goes on and it reads the rest of these Beatitudes. And we talked about week after week about all these things and how he blesses each one of these avenues. Some of them don't seem so blessed on the face of them, right? But they are because he unpacks it for us. And at the end of that list, this is the things he says are blessed, the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those that are meek, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. And then he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for his name. Blessed are those who are reviled because of his name. I have a scripture that Mark brought to me today. Mark, I'm asking if you'd bring that to us today. You have it? I'll have him read it for us real quick to think about this piece for us. Find it in Peter as he's writing to the church. And God gave me this verses from First Peter chapter four, starting with verse twelve. It says Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory of God or and of God rests upon you. On their part, on their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if any one of you suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Amen. Amen. When we see those things, it talks about being with us in the middle of persecution. That scripture talks to us very clearly about not being those who make mistakes on our own fault and then say, oh, Lord, where are you at? He's saying, no, when you're persecuted on my behalf, guess what? I'm with you. It talks about in scriptures, these are the things that are promises for us. He is with me. He is my God. He will strengthen me. 
He will rescue me. He is faithful. I am not alone. And in Christ, I can do all things because I am blessed. And that's the truth. We talked about what it means to be bold and to be those who are bold with our witness, bold in our faith, standing in the Lord. We talked about the grace of God for us. Just as that scripture talked about, so we saw in Ephesians 2, it says, you were dead in trespasses and sins once you were once walked. And it talks about how we were dead and all these things, all these mistakes we made, we were dead. But he, in his grace to us, he extended forgiveness to us that we would act like it. We would be those who act like those who've been forgiven. Would you say amen to that? We talked about missions and we talked about those who, who go and serve and how we collectively get to be those who partner with them and we get to send them out and we get to partner with them every month so that they can do the work of God around the world. That theme was all for Jesus. And as we look at that world, it, it's, it's a lot smaller than it used to be because we can, we can connect with friends and talk with friends over video chat, all sorts of things. It's an amazing time to be alive. And because it's so reachable, then we should really be praying for our friends around the world. The, the theme of that, of that uh, missions convention was to know Jesus and make him known. And we talked about this at Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in God, I, I, now I live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. I thought it'd be very apt for us to stop and to pray for just a moment for all of our missions partners around the world. In fact, Lori, if you would, would you come? Could you, could you lead us in a prayer for that? I know I didn't ask you ahead of time. I'm sorry for putting you on this spot. But here's the thing. I know the prayer of someone who's gone and done it has a different gravity for all of us. For those who don't know, Lori gave up her life in serving China with the love of Christ as a teacher. She still has a heart for the world. If you'd pray for those who serve. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to reveal God to us and that you are the spirit of truth. God, you're the spirit of grace and you're both at the same time. God, there's so many people that are fighting in this world over what those mean, over what truth is. But Lord, we thank you that you came to show us in the flesh what those things mean. And so, Father, I pray that you would embolden your church in every country, especially the closed ones, to be grace and truth to the people that don't know you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You say amen, church. Give a hand of appreciation for Lord, please. We had this theme, and we talked about what it means to be more than conquerors. Romans 8, at the end of that, it says, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And we asked that question, what is conquering your life? What is conquering your life? We talked about facing your Pharaoh facing the thing that would lord over you and remind you of your past. We talked about what giant are you facing? What's the thing that's taunting you? What's the thing that's mocking you in your faith? We talked about being those who face your giant. We asked that question also, what's seducing you? What's the thing that's trying to lure you away from your life with Christ? And we talked about face your Delilah. We talked about in all these things that we'd be more than conquerors. I think it'd be very apt for us to pray for those who need to experience breakthrough, need to experience breakthrough. Some are dealing with addiction. Some are dealing with hidden sins. Some are dealing with, with unforgiveness that they can't shake. Friends, for this year ahead of us, that you would not be held down by those things, but you would have the liberty that's found in Jesus Christ. 
So we want to pray for a breakthrough right now. Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord, for your church. Lord, that we would be those who abandon all of these things. Lord, that would hold us down and be spiritual chains on our life. Lord, you, come, you came to set the captive free. Lord, that's me. That's all of us. Lord, you came for us. Lord, so we ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ, by your spirit, Lord, illuminate those things in our heart and our lives, Lord, that are holding us back. Lord, they're, they're taunting us, Lord, like a Pharaoh. They're standing in front of us and mocking us like a giant. They're trying to seduce us like Delilah. Lord, we won't stand for those things. Lord, we cry liberty in this year ahead. We proclaim that over your church. Lord, forgive us. Lord, for these things in these areas where we fall short, forgive us. Lord, for those sins that we try to hide away, Lord, forgive us. Lord, of these bad attitudes or this unforgiveness we might hold on to, Lord, forgive us. We want breakthrough for this year ahead. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We talked about what it means to have Thanksgiving, and we had a great Thanksgiving in that way. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5. We talked about giving thanks. Then this last season of the year, this Christmas season, we talked about joy to the world. And we just finished up on Christmas Eve talking about embracing the divine. Man, of all the things we talked about this year, the Lord has continually brought us back to abandoning all else and coming after where he wants to take us, that we would embrace the divine and the things he wants to do in our lives. See, we're gonna start out this next year like we do so often with a season of prayer and fasting. And we're gonna have a fast for 40 days starting on Sunday the 2nd. So you can have one more day at the beginning of January to eat all those things you're not supposed to eat. No, not really. But we're gonna start collectively on that second for 40 days in prayer and fasting. See, some things it talks about in scripture only come by prayer and fasting. Some breakthroughs only come in that way, such deep-seated things that they only come in that way. And what does that mean for us? Well, for some, they've never done a fast before. What does a fasting mean? Fasting means it's not a diet. It's not a kickstart so you can get on keto. Uh, a fast is doing without something that sustains our body so that we can focus on something that keeps our spirit alive, which is our time with God. And so we, we have something good, which is food, and we do without it. And so we can spend that time with the Lord. And that's why we do it. And we're intentional with that. We're reminded every time we don't eat something during those days when we're fasting, why we're doing it, right? And that's why we do it. We don't twist God's arm. It's not like, like us not eating, like we're getting God in a move or trying to choke God out. It's not how it works. We don't, we don't move him towards those things. We clarify our hearts to hear from him. That's why we fast, to focus on him. So for some, it, it might be that you're gonna fast um, from food for a, a certain amount of time. Some people might do a Daniel fast. Some people might do that from social media. Maybe you do it from movies or entertainment, something that you enjoy that's a good thing, but guess what? It takes up time you could spend with God. I can't tell you what it is you're gonna fast from. Those things are for you and for God in your prayer closet. See, he talks about the way we fast is not to be, oh, woe is me and mournful and, oh, I'm fasting. You get nothing out of that, friends. You get only the pity of people being like, I'm sorry you're not eating food. That's all you get. But instead, if you wash your face and you stand upright and then you spend that time with God, you draw closer and you hear from his spirit clearer. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. We're, we're using this catalyst, this book. It's a great book. In fact, collectively, we've talked about it before. It's The Circle Maker by Mark Batterson. I like this quote, the, the hard thing about praying hard is letting God do the heavy lifting. You have to trust the favor of God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. See, for this next year, we wanna do that very thing. We wanna pray circles around our greatest dreams and our biggest fears. We wanna be those who are intentional about how we come into this year in prayer because I'm believing for a breakthrough. I'm believing to see people come to know Jesus. 
I'm, I'm believing for your family member, for your friend to know Jesus, your neighbor to know Jesus, that person you hate at work to know Jesus, the person who keeps messing up your Zoom call to know Jesus. We're praying for people to know Jesus. And see, it starts with us first in our hearts. So we're gonna fast and pray to know him. I'm gonna invite the worship team. We're gonna end with a, a song today before we come and do a blessing. The question we ask every week is, have you embraced Jesus? Maybe you're here, you're under the sound of my voice and maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. Maybe you're here at the invitation of a friend or the invitation of a loved one and you've never said yes. Today is your opportunity to embrace Christ. Whenever we look to the symbol of the cross, it's one of freedom and forgiveness for us. See, Christ went to his death, taking on the sin and the mistakes of the world. They weren't his own. He lived a perfect life. But he took on your mistakes and mine. He took on our mistakes collectively so that we can be forgiven and brought back into a relationship with the Father. It says in Scripture this, in Romans 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It continues, it says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Today is your opportunity to embrace Christ. I'm gonna ask if all of us would stand and if we bow our heads for just a moment. As we have our heads bowed, there's this prayer that we have that you can say to the Lord. And in doing so, it's, it's embracing Christ into your life. It's not just some kind of flippant thing, a serious decision to follow Jesus. It's something that we say is like this. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again. Forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If that's a prayer that you pray today, these all have their heads bowed. If that's you and you're in the house today, maybe you've never prayed that before, today's your first time, or maybe you've prayed that a long time ago and walked away from God, but you mean that prayer today. If that's you, if you let me know, if you just raise your hand wherever you are, we want to agree with you and celebrate with you as you make that decision for God. Are there any here with their hand to make a decision for God today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And in this, for all of us, as we've taken this time to reflect on what God has spoken to us, we want to pray over this new year for each one of us, for us as individuals, for us as families, that the Lord would bless us and guide us and direct us. I'm going to pray this prayer, and then I'm going to open up this altar to you. If during this, this sermon at any time, during this time where God has challenged your heart, I want you to come and to make a place, an altar with God. Step out from your seat. Make it be a challenge for you. If you're at home, that you would stand where you are and you would make that altar with God. But we want to make a decision to say, Lord, I hear what you're doing. I want to take a step closer to you in this new year. So, Lord, I pray over everyone, Lord, in the sound of my voice, Lord. We ask, Lord, that by your spirit, you would guide and direct us towards all these things that you reminded us of this past year. Lord, that in this year to come, Lord, I pray a blessing upon every single family, every single individual. Lord, that you would bless us by your spirit. Lord, you would guide us and direct us. Lord, open up new avenues in front of us, Lord. Do all those things by your spirit. Lord, as we draw close to you, we let go of everything, Lord, from the past. We let go of those things that would hold us back, and we follow after you. Lord, as we head into this new year with prayer and fasting, we do so, Lord, to hear from your heart, to hear, Lord, what you're speaking to us. Lord, we want to be used by you, by your hand. Lord, we pray this in your powerful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord be praised. The Lord be praised. Before we go, we get to embrace this new year and celebrate together. I want to pray a blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, I pray a blessing upon your church, your people. God, that by your spirit, you would empower us, Lord, to live your love out to those around us. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Know this. We love you very much here at Cornerstone. God bless you, and Happy New Year.